On my ski expedition across Greenland, I use these Ausnes Nansen skis. These things are super, super sweet. They can take a serious beating. I have an older pair of skis that have 1,500 miles on them, and I finally had to replace them for my expedition across Greenland. These have 300 miles or 500 kilometers, and they are super, super good. Now, you can see that I used Voile three pin bindings. These are a little bit harder to find nowadays because companies want to sell you the hydraulic jack sort of uh, randonne or telemark style. You don't need these for, or those for long ski expeditions because there's like no downhill, it's no big deal, but these work incredibly well. Now, I did make the mistake of getting the step support because one of them broke. I'll show you that here right now. The other one broke and it caused me no end of trouble. So on a long ski expedition, unless you think you're going to need climbing, I don't recommend getting those anymore because when it snagged on my uh, one of my straps, it's hung up. It really caused me a lot of trouble. Now, these are, I think, 195 skis. And the thing about these is they have integrated or built-in uh, ability to hold kicker skins. So uh, let me put this down and I'll show you. Now you wonder why one with old, old school three pin bindings, I'll explain that in a moment. But the cool thing about this is when you're doing ultra long distance skiing, you do not want a full length skin. And I mean, do not. Unlike my touring skis that get a full length skin, my Dina fits, that would be literal misery to have these on and then scooting against the skin. Instead, they only have skins on the kicker zone. Now you might wonder why I didn't go with skis that just have a track pattern. Hey, my light's up there, check it out. You might wonder that. They do not have enough grip to tow 150 pound or like a 68 kilo or 75 kilo sled. They just don't. I've done it and I pulled hard, but it's miserable. These skins are incredibly good. Now, one of the mistakes I made, and I talk about that in my book with Dr. Terry Williams about our expedition, Two Friends and a Polar Bear, is that my skins iced up, but his did not. There are two versions of skins for these Ausnes Nansen skis. One is a nylon and mohair blend. The other is a mohair complete blend. I made a big mistake. I thought, oh, survivability is more important. I was thinking years and years ahead, ooh, go with the pure mohair. Even though it does not last as long, you can see that this is just fine. The nylon mohair requires you to carry glob stop. Terry had zero problems with his. Mine globbed up in ice once the, it got a little bit warm. Warm is relative in Greenland and I had lots of icing problems. So that is a big factor. But you can see here that we screwed in our skin. So in theory, you're supposed to just attach these kickers, glue it down, go and ski along. But let me tell you, I had that happen in multiple ski expeditions, especially in Antarctica. When I'm going along the tail snags, it pulls up the skin and then it gets covered in powdery snow and there's no way to reattach it. For so ultra long trips, you need to commit and attach the skin completely and permanently to your ski because if this slips off, oh no, you're toast. So I just use some super short number six and number eight, three eighths inch screws. Now the cool thing about this is see the steel plate? The new design is plastic, uh, but Terry's didn't break, so I guess it's okay. And up top, they used to have a Ausnes badge, but when you cross your skis, stumbling around a nice and sastrugi, choo, I would chop that little badge off so they just quit putting on there. And this plate literally hooks through the ski. This is an integral design. It's way better than the style of skins where you just strap it around because those straps build up ice and that is miserable. So this design is specific to Ausnes. I don't know any other manufacturer that does this, but this is the ultimate kick booty sort of design. Now, why did I go a three pin instead of triple end bindings? Well, I've seen multiple instances of the triple end binding where the mechanism, and I, I met some ski expeditioners, the mechanism broke or tore apart in their plastic rails. Triple end is great for a lot of things, but let me tell you, 
I'm not betting my life on them. So instead, the uh, old school three pin bindings. Now, Terry didn't have a problem. My boots are really worn. They've got, I don't know, 2,000 plus miles or 3,400 kilometers in them. But when I pinned them down, no problem. I'm gonna put a hole in my ceiling. These work great. Now, I actually have seen these fail uh, in some skis in Old Camp in Greenland and Kangler Schwa right here. This rivet on the hinge could break. So definitely I'm bearing a bolt and a nut. So you can, and a nylon nut and some tools. So in case that does somehow break, you can get yourself going. As long as you're not too hard on these, they really shouldn't break. The causative agent for breaking these things is that if there is ice, let me show you here, ice on the tongue of your boot or in the pinholes, you're going to wreck the binding. So every morning I would take my ski pole, put it in there and there's steel in here, so it's not that big a deal. Use a carbide and carve out the ice in mine. Terry, he's a lighter guy. He could just literally kick his boot on a ski the snow would come out and he could clip it in like no problem. I don't know if it's a weight thing because he's only 120 pounds, I'm 170 pounds. Me, it's like a morning fight to get this on. So I don't know if that's aware of my gear or just because I'm so much heavier than him. So that is the big thing. If you want to protect your bindings and not have them fail, simply just clear the ice. Don't leave any ice on here chisel it out, scrape it off, whatever you got to do. And you don't have to clamp this thing down all the way. I mean, there's like, I don't know if there's a boot that does it. All you have to do is get it clicked to the first position. And that's all you need on these ski boots. Um, other than that, the huge thing about the Ausnes skis, unlike other backcountry skis like my Rosignols, is these have steel all the way around the tips and all the way to the tail, you can see the steel goes all the way to the tail and it's got an extra protector. Just to give you an idea, compare that to my Rosignol BC skis. These do not. The steel only comes up to the tip and then there's no steel support here. I have cracked the tail and the tip or the tails you can see I've had to repair these multiple times. It kind of sucks. Then you can see the steel doesn't go all the way to the tail. So if you put this somewhere and the, the tail is bouncing, it breaks. So that's why I love my Ausnes skis so much more than my Rosignols. I do have skins for these. They're wider, so if I need more float, it's pre pretty nice. The track pattern's almost completely worn. I mean, I've ground that thing down. But if you need to have your life matter and you don't want to break off your ski tips or at least reduce the chance the Ausnes skis with full steel all the way around is a much better choice and because of the tail design it's not part of the surface of the ski it's an insert this thing is tough I have no breakage problems again compare that to my Rosignols I don't know how many times I've had to repair those that is a bummer and just to show you how tough these are. Here are the skis that have had, whatever I said, 2,000 plus miles. Just to give an idea, let's see, uh, I've, I've repaired them with uh, epoxy. Um, I can't remember whatever uh, the two part epoxy is you get at the auto store. It's totally awesome. You can see this skin, it's finally starting to get worn. I've got my screws in here, I went totally crazy. Uh, my skis are one, these guys are 195s. So this is literally a ski that has 2,000 miles on it. Just to give you an idea, and these are finely chipped up. Because as you're stumbling on, on um, uh, Sestrugi, for some reason my left ski tends to cross over more. And I eventually chip it apart. So having that glue there, I'll put a link below to the glue that I used. Uh, that stuff is super, super good. That's something you also want to carry is some repair glue. But just to give you an idea of what skis look after 2,000 miles of usage, the groove channel is still intact. I mean, these are awesome. I love them. And the only reason I replaced these with the new ones because the chips on the top finally expose the wood. And if water gets into the wood, it'll break it apart when it's minus 30. 
The only place I've been able to order my Alcinus Nansen skis is from Neptune Mountaineering in Colorado. Link below, you can see the skins here. Let me show you what the skin material is here, just to give you an idea. Because always carry in a long expedition, always carry a new set of skins, just to show you the plastic toppers. I wasn't super excited about them, but that's actually a protection. And then there's still steel in here, so actually the plastic's not that big a deal. I've read some people have had them rip off, but I brought a whole new set of skins just in case I had any problems. Recommendation two, even though they say you should only need the 46, we actually, Terry bought the 48. They're just a little bit wider and then you just razor bladed them. In the end, the 46 seemed to work just fine. So I don't think it was that big a deal, but I did call ski shops and like, oh, 44, 46, 48, that's the length. Like, no, no, that's the width of the skin. So the 46 seemed to work just fine on the Nansen's. As you can see here, that would be the right width. Other things I keep thinking about, make sure you get yourself some ski straps. I have the Swix Velcro ones. My touring skis have uh, the plastic ones from Teton Mountaineering. You always wanna have something for your skis so you can put them together. Otherwise they flip around, they can guillotine you. And because these edges can be sharp, you can end up with a horrible wound. Let me tell you, you don't wanna go there. So let's uh, strap those bad boys down and it makes your skis much safer. Also, these bindings, if for some reason you don't like the springs on them, you can take them off. They are adjustable. Spin. For the boot sizes, they lock very well. Uh, let me put that back on there and I'll show you just how that works on my boots. Just to give you an idea. So let me, uh, let me put my boots in there. These things are worn out. And all you do is just hook that around the heel, put it up there, oh, holding it the wrong direction, clip it in. There you go. And the reason you want these heel, you don't just want this, is it's more supportive, it's more secure, and it makes you more efficient. Just relying on this puts a lot of torque on the tip, but getting the tail lock here without the big hydraulic for randonnée and telemark skiing. You don't need that extra weight. This thing adds a lot of strength to your ski. And you can see, a little bit bouncy, it's much more stable. So definitely get this volet style. If you're going with a three pin, don't get the big hydraulic. That's just extra weight you're not gonna need. Other than that, Ausnes Nansen skis, whew, boy. If you wanna bet your life on something and a lot of explorers have, these are the skis to have. Please like, comment, and subscribe to the channel. AaronLinsu.com slash green in for gear like this.